Hey everyone, it's Dave from Plasma Games, and welcome to the first video in a series about the development of a game, Contain Corps, uh, which happens to be our first commercial game. Um, this week was quite hectic in terms of features. We started on a fire system in last week, and it has already been rewritten entirely. Originally, it was quite simple. Um, we basically had a master script called Fire Manager which manage all the day of the fires across the map. And um, this class would spawn the fire objects and also add it to a dictionary called Check Fire Dictionary. Um, we then looped all over the fire objects in the dictionary and ran their logic. Um, in our system, uh, this still remains even after the rewrite. Um, fire spreads by checking its surroundings, but it can only do this when it's reached a certain size. Um, after reaching the size, it looks at all the tiles around it and then checks if that tile is a valid tile. And uh, a valid tile here is a tile that's not empty, so it actually exists in the world, and also has a findability greater than zero. Uh, if this check passes, then it, it just makes a random check. It gets the findability to, to dictate whether it should actually spread to that block or not. Which basically means that when the fire spreads over tiles with low fire ability, it just spreads slower because naturally the uh, the check fails um, more often than not. Um, oh yeah, and lastly, the um, the fires do damage to the tiles that they inhabit. So eventually, those tiles they like, can break and leave rubble, and um, the flame just slowly dwindles on that block until uh, well, it just deletes itself. And this is like the basics of um, the fire system. Um, the problem was that it was incredibly slow. Um, with the, the multitude of nested for loops, it, it just didn't scale in a fast manner. And um, it was evident that we needed an alternative solution, which would be more optimal. Um, Dylan, my colleague, suggested that we could uh, store the flame objects that are in the outer edge of the flame in like a dictionary. And just update that dictionary every tick, and then we would only um, run the logic for those ones on the outer plane. But um, it wouldn't necessarily work because we also need to keep track of the ones in the middle of the plane to see, um, so we could actually make them um, didn't do out when they um, when they burn up effectively. So like we needed a way to keep track of all the fire objects. Um, in a fire, um, but also have it actually be fast and optimal. Um, this is basically where I just I just said I just decided to multi-thread the fire. Um, I've never had multi-threading experience. I've never coded it. I I, I mean I, I barely heard of it. I know what it does, but um, so it, it seemed quite daunting at first. Um, multi-threading code can be quite a hassle to manage, and you know. You can get so many bugs, which are not simple to debug. Um, but luckily, Unity has this thing called the job system, um, and it pretty much saved the day. Unity's job system, as described by Unity themselves, is a system that allows uh, users to write multi threaded code that interacts with the cloud. Basically, uh, it's basically just the a simpler way of um, writing multi threaded code where Unity does all the hard work and you basically just give Unity um, jobs effectively and then Unity handles how it runs these jobs. But it can run multiple jobs at the same time, that's why it's um, it basically utilizes your CPU in an effective way um, without having you to write at like a really low level try and multi thread something. Um, so obviously, it's good for us because I'm not I'm not gonna write the level code multi threading. Um, so using the job system and a great tutorial by um, Infallible Code, you should check the new channel out. They're quite good. Um, I was able to take a, a small crack of the fire system. Um, this this required like a huge rewrite of the system. The original system was quite component based, but with the job system. Um, everything needs to be data-based because obviously, well, not obviously, but you can't pass strongly typed classes or unmanaged uh, data types to a job. So that just means basically you can't, 
cast game objects or components and um, you can only have variables of like integers, strings and luckily lists but um, that's pretty much it. Um, firstly I, I just made a, a struct inside the file object class uh, to get around the whole no strongly tied classes rule and I call this struct data and um, I just had to migrate all the file logic um, which was originally in a function into that struct which required a lot of changes to like the references and um, because obviously the um, code inside that um, so that function was designed to loop over all the uh, the fire like uh, objects, but here the job is itself the flame. So um yeah, I also had to create a job. Um, I had to actually define the job, and also I had to create a job handler. Um, by the end of it, I had all the infrastructure I needed. Most of the code was the same, but um. The actual online code around it, the, the code around it up, changed quite drastically. Um, it wasn't all done though. That was honestly the easier part of multi threading. The harder part was actually cracking down on all the bugs. Um, for one, I forgot to consider the second rule of the job system, which is um, no passing or unmanaged types. All my variables, or like half of them, were uh, basically bad variables. You couldn't pass them into the job. So here I was sitting at my desk, just reading through the documentation, browsing through dozens of forum posts, trying to figure out why the job wouldn't start. And it even got to a point where I commented out every variable and all the code in the. Um, in the file object class in the in the struct, but um, it turns out that the constructor of the class also matters, uh, and that had like all the variables. So I just never come to that out. So that basically wasted an hour of my time. Um, but um, I eventually figured out uh, and cracked out all the bad data types I was passing in, and um, some of them did require a lot more intensive workarounds than others, but. After a few hours, um, everything was good. Yeah, the job started, and yeah. Next was the problem of uh, certain o certain functions only being able to run in the main thread. Uh, that required more intensive workarounds. Um, but all in all, it just ended up with a few extra um, static, like global lists um, that had to like loop through that stored all the data that I was concerned about. Like they, uh, I just couldn't reference it inside the job. Um, so uh, I think there were two lists that were like buffers for creating and destroying fires because um, there were problems with creating fires in a job. Um, Unity just didn't like that. Um, when actually analyzing the performance, um, the multi thread system nearly triples. The, actually, probably more than triples. Um, I haven't taken any. Um, serious tests, but just from the, just comparing the performance from before and after, um, I may be able to pick up something that shows a difference. Um, but it's definitely a substantial increase in performance. Um, there are a few bugs here and there, which I have mostly cracked down on. Um, there was a problem with um, when destroying fires. Um, there was a problem with um, cleaning up data. And um, you know, garbage collection. Uh, and all the stuff was removed from the list, and it caused a whole bunch of problems and like a hard crash, which wasn't great. But um, that's all gone now. Um, I haven't encountered any other bugs with my system. Um, so yeah, I think it's pretty, pretty conclusive results. Um, the knowledge I've gained though from multi-threading uh, is pretty much irreplaceable. Like, um, there are a lot of things I could optimize with my new um, knowledge with multi-threading, which is great. Um, it's a really good way to um, to optimize um, code in 
in in a relatively easy way actually um but obviously i haven't tried um the i haven't tested the fires on um lower end computers because obviously computers with um, a lower core count um will not multi-thread as well they, they can't run as many processes in parallel so the fire will run worse on lower end machines so we'll have to factor that in maybe um maybe that we can have a setting that somehow maybe turns off certain aspects of fires so you can run it better on your machine the next thing i am off to implement is actually room detection um i have figured out a pretty cool algorithm to um to sort out room detection so i'm hoping hoping to um implement that in the next few days slash weeks hopefully a bit more days than weeks um but as you know or may not know i am currently studying uni so i don't know how um my whole time till will work in terms of working on the project. Um, but the last few weeks, flames have been taken over my life, pretty much 80% of my life. So I'm, I'm glad that it's done and that I'm freer to do other things, such as room detection. That's me signing off, David Oglesi from Plasma Studios.